Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Football Manager Career Mode with Chelsea Football Club. Today, well, starting off, we have an away game against Brentford, but looking ahead, we have a game against Brentford, Aston Villa, and then a home game against Liverpool, who are fourth in the league, so it will be a close game, more than likely, especially with a bit of, you know, spice added on top, given that they knocked us out of the Carabao Cup. So... This is a game we'll definitely be looking to win against Brentford and Aston Villa and definitely against Liverpool because it'll keep us away from falling out of the top four but also hopefully take us a little bit closer to Manchester City. So let's go ahead and apply the opposition instructions. I want to make some changes to this formation as well because obviously it's a slight change to what we are normally playing as when we play like this. So... I think some, you know, just make it a little bit more familiar in terms of the wing-back roles and the centre-backs and everything. So that's what I'm going to go with. In terms of personnel changes, we obviously are going to have to make some changes today. And what I had in mind for this game was play Rhys James as the ball-winning defensive mid. Obviously, when he played at Wigan, when he was on loan from Chelsea, that's the role that he was typically deployed in. So I'm going to try him out there. We'll play Conor Gallagher in the box-to-box. -box. Obviously, Osimhen and Mudrick are not fit, so they're going to have to come off and so are all of these players so let's build a bit of a bench up with some of the players that we have even though we really do not have enough going for us at the moment um and other than that i think well we might as well take travis akamir and we'll go to the under 21s and see if we can pick up some attacking players so jimmy j morgan as our striker i do like him and maybe diego Moreira. And I think, yeah, that's a full bench now. It's definitely, you know, a rotated team for us. Um, playing, you know, a little bit of a chain system. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I think I like it. So we'll try it out and hopefully get the win against Brentford in this game. Roy are making a good tackle here to win us the ball back. He's going to look for a little bit of support from his teammates. He goes forward to Madawake, who finds Gallagher, who finds Jackson. And how on earth has he not finished that? If anything, it looked like he just gently tapped it instead of actually shooting the ball. And yeah, cost us a very big chance there. But we have the ball back in this highlight about 10 minutes into the game. We find Colwill, who's looking forward, looking for Nicholas Jackson. That's a great ball forward. He's looking for a bit of assistance. He cuts back, finds Breuer in the box. And that's what we needed. A nice early goal in this game. We're 1-0 up. That's a great start. We've got a free kick chance here, and it's going to be Reese James potentially shooting from this distance. He does go for the shot, and yeah, never troubling the keeper that one. Brentford looking to build up here as they have Onyeka on the ball. It goes forward to Yenel, but it's a mistake, and Gallagher picks up on it. Breuer combining with Madueke, who's looking for a cross here. He finds Breuer, who shoots from a narrow angle, and it is saved by David Raya. Brentford once again building out from the back, but oh, and Breuer nearly intercepting that one as he sort of lunged in for it. They find Mbermo down the wing though, but Chilwell doing some great defensive work to cover that off. And now we look forward to Conor Gallagher, who combines with Reese James in this new role for us at least. You know, he hasn't played there much for Chelsea. Josh Brooking going forward to find Madueke. They're keeping the ball nicely here, the team. Brooking going forward to Breuer, who looks to head it down for Madueke. Um, Buria potentially winning it back for us though, at least putting some pressure on, which is nice to see. Onyeka looking to go long once again though, and Brentford combining well down this side where we've got our inexperienced fullback. It goes into Tony, and that is one all just before half time. That is a killer goal to concede. And there's still another highlight to go before we head into half time. And this would be an absolute killer if it's another goal for Brentford. They're building up here looking fairly dangerous. The ball goes through for Tony once again, and he shoots straight through Diogo Costa. And that is two goals in a couple of minutes. And yeah, that is a disappointing collapse just before the break. I want to have another look at that because that literally looked like it went through our goalkeeper. Um, a very strange last few minutes here. The, the shoot, yeah, it just went sort of under his armpit. Um, some bo poor goalkeeping there, I can't lie. And that's half time, so we're going to go in and tell them they've been terrible because that was an awful, awful end to the half. And we're going to make some changes. So Reese James can go back at right back, and Kunku can play in the cam. Gallagher can play box to box, and then in the deep line playmaker role, we'll bring on, you know what, we'll bring on uh, Chukumaker in that role and see if he can spark a little bit of creativity to help us out. 
Rich James on the ball now as he's looking to drive us forward in at the right back position that he's obviously a lot more used to. But Brentford picking out that pass comfortably. This should be ours to win there though as Madaweke wins the ball. We have a chance to get it back here. Chuck can make it going forward to Bria who turns, shoots and it's just over. A great free kick position here as we have a chance to bend it around the wall with Chilwell. He's going to shoot from here. He does and he puts it in the back of the net. Okay, game on. 15 minutes and we've got to get another goal. Brentford with a free kick here as they shoot from Ranger comes off the crossbar and thankfully we win the second header there because that was in a very very dangerous position they're looking to move forward still does Rosler finds Norgard who finds Tony I'm surprised he didn't turn and shoot there and they're going back to the defense but then back over the top but Shile cuts that one out and Moreira has a chance to put us on the counter here he's come off the bench to try and make some sort of impact we find Chukwameka in the middle of the park over the top for Nicholas Jackson with a lot of room here he finds Broya in the middle and it's in the back of the net come on that is exactly what we needed I'm gonna go cautious and see if we can waste a bit of time now to the end because this game has been poor from us and thankfully, that is full time. So a 3-2 win in the end. The same result I think we had last episode against Leicester. Um, Kurt Tom, it was a bit of a let-off because quite honestly, that was. Um, just those two goals just before half-time absolutely ruined us. I feel like we would have won that so comfortably otherwise. But that does keep us, even on games played with Manchester City. Now we're still four points behind them uh, as the leading chasing pack. Here's what the rest of the fixtures for the next game we look like. You'll see Manchester will be going one game ahead on games played and they have to play Arsenal. Normally, I'd consider that a potential points drop, but Arsenal are currently down in 11th position. So if they do pull something off, it will be a bit of a shock, but I'm more than happy for them to do so. They are at home, so they do have that little advantage as well. So we're going to skip ahead and let's see. Oh my gosh, a huge 3-0 win for Arsenal against Man City. That takes them right underneath the cusp for European qualification. But of course, that is huge for us. We can go within one point of Manchester City if we win our next game, which is against Aston Villa, who are sixth in the table. They did lose 1-0 to Sheffield United, who are down in 18th. So it's a good time to be playing them. Leicester also beating Liverpool. Stoke drawing with Tottenham. Some big points dropped in this um, game week and Liverpool currently outside of the top four as Newcastle go ahead of them. So the top four race is really heating up but so is the title race we've got. If we're going off Manchester City's games I think that's 13 games left to play in the Premier League and we can be within one point so this is going to be a big end to the season and you would hope that our form will pick up even better than it is at the moment it's you know we've had a little bit of a struggle but that's been mostly in cup competitions you can see these three results here those were all cups that's the only really points dropped in the premier league so once enzo and caicedo come back osimhen and mudrick are back fit and firing again we should be looking good and there's a chance that osimhen will be fit and ready to go for this game against aston villa so here we are, it's game day against Aston Villa and we do have our two attacking players back and ready for this game. The downside is two of our starting midfield are not fit and ready for this game. So Conor Gallagher will be playing in the box-to-box -box role and in terms of the deep line playmaker, I think I'll play Carney Tukumaker. Charlie Webster will come to the bench because I think he will be a good option for us if we need him. Josh Brooking can go um, on the bench as well and we might as well replace Romeo Lavia um, with Buddy Achille and then in terms of having an extra winger I'm just going to go and grab Diego Moreira from the under 23s I think he's probably our best option to pick up there and that should be good I think you know obviously a fullback's still a little bit tired because they just play week in week out but once this game's over there's a little bit of a break it'll probably be an international period I guess um and then we've got a break to that Liverpool game so we should have enough time to get our players back and in full fitness hopefully with no major injuries so this is the lineup that Aston Villa are going with they got two wins two losses and a draw in the last five and they're going with a 4-4-2 formation in this game and two minutes in we have a highlight starting off with Osman combining with Nkunku there but we do lose out on the ball and I think you know this could be an area where we're a bit vulnerable we don't have numbers in the midfield like they do because their wingers are playing so deep so when they counter I feel like they're going to have a lot of bodies available to them to pass to but 
Hopefully we can get a goal or two ahead ourselves and not have to worry too much about that as Madueke drives towards goal. He's going to shoot from distance. It takes a deflection straight to the keeper. Villa on the ball once again here as they get the ball to Tielemans. Pau Torres now, Ollie Watkins. They have a good pass through there, but they do not utilize it. And we pick up the ball with a good tackle. Mudrick now surely driving down this wing. Yes, he does, utilizing that pace that he's got. He gets into the box, looking for a bit of support as he cuts back. Crosses into the box, but no one on the end of it capable of helping him out, unfortunately. And now it's going to be Aston Villa to break, but Chua with a great interception. And we look to go forward again. Gallagher picking up the ball here, nicely controlled. Go forward to Chukwameka, who finds Mudrick, who goes to Nkunku, who finishes in the top corner. And that's what we want to see under 10 minutes, and we're 1-0 up. A deep free kick here with Reese James, as he's going to probably hoof this one into the box for our defenders to attack. It's Fafana who's going to pick up on this one. He crosses in, finds Nkunku, who turns and shoots. And that's a fantastic, fantastic strike from him. And that is 2-0 up in 15 minutes. So this is a great start to the game. And disaster. Osman has taken a knock. It could be a tight hamstring, so I'm going to replace him with Broya. I'm not even risking it. So 20 minutes in, and our star striker that's only just come back. You can see him hobbling down the touchline here, trying to get back to the bench. As oh, that took a nasty deflection, and Alex Moreno gets one back for Aston Villa. Damn it. Another highlight just leading up to halftime. Reese James goes in to make a tackle there, but he does not win the ball cleanly. He does that time, though, as Madueke now finds Gallagher in the middle of the park. He's going to look for some help. He finds Madueke, who goes forward to Reese James. He puts the ball into the box, and it's Mudrick, and he's... Man, why do our left wingers always shoot so lightly towards goal? He was offside in the end, so it didn't matter. But we saw Nicholas Jackson, I'm pretty sure, in the previous game do something very, very similar. He just sort of gently taps it towards the goal and the keeper picks it up. So we're through to halftime. 2-1 up, which is good. But, you know, a little bit more nervous now because... Aston Villa have managed one back, but there was a nasty deflection on their shot. So maybe it was just a hint of fortune. Diaby on the ball here tries to control it with his head, but never really had a chance with how much power was on that. Gallagher winning the ball back, and now Broya going forward, can't find the pass to Madueke. And Aston Villa got a chance to build up once again from the back, as they've been trying to do all game. Diego Carlos finding Tillemans, who finds Tete. They've got a lot of room to work with here. Now Watkins out wide, not where he likes to be, but he can perform here. Tete crosses in, and oh my gosh, it's nearly an own goal, and... Chilwell then slams it out of play for a corner. Don't scare me like that, bro. And Kunku on the ball now, <laughs> hoofing it back to the defence. Finding Fafana, who finds Reese James going forward for Madueke, but the passing is just a little bit off once again. But we pick up the loose ball there. And Kunku going forward to Broya has to finish from here. He's taking it wide. And I think he made that a little bit too tight of an angle for himself. And the keeper makes a good save. Oh my gosh, that's taken me by surprise. It looked like that highlight was just coming to an end. And Aston Villa have scored a second goal. We'll take a look here. Colwell was just fighting with Ollie Watkins out on the wing. And Tete then gets the ball here, crosses, and Maxi Gomez headers above. I think it's Fafana there. And wow, that was... um. That was bad. Colwell's having a pretty poor game, so I'm going to bring on Badia Shile. He also gives us a very good aerial threat in the box. Chukwameka's struggling, so I'm going to bring on Charlie Webster. I think it's also soon going to be a chance for Ian Matson to get on the wing and see if he, or on the left wing back position, see if he can perform there. And we don't, I guess, you know what? I might even bring Broya off, even though he just sort of came on for, um, for Vic Drossman and give Nicholas Jackson a run up front, see if he can get a goal for us. Aston Villa yet again on the ball. <clears throat> they seem to be getting a lot of um, time on the ball today as they now find a little bit of room down this side to work with Tete working his way down the wing. We can't get it back off him somehow. And they do get it with Alex Moreno who finds Diaby, crosses in and Maxi Gomez headers just wide. That is way too close for comfort. Villa on the ball with about five minutes left now and things are looking bleak for us in terms of going one point uh, behind Manchester City. Kamara on the ball now finding Moreno ball into Diaby and he headers into the back of the net. They're going to check it but he was onside there. I'm like 90% sure and this is looking like it might be a disaster. Yep, the goal's given. 
Fafana on the ball now in the defence as we have a few, few minutes left to scrape a draw out of this game. Maybe Mudrick going long, trying to find Madawaka. He headers on for Nicholas Jackson, who controls it and puts it wide. That's, that's not what we needed. And that's full time. 3-2 in the end to Aston Villa. That is an absolute disaster. And we did not capitalise on the chance we had to gain on Man City. I actually cannot believe that. That scuffed first goal and then just defence looked like it was asleep really for the rest of that. And, ah, oh, that is going. And on transfer deadline day, there is a big game. Liverpool in fifth place against Man City in first. Liverpool at home for this one. So another chance for Man City to drop some points. And we are praying they do so because we have another chance, obviously, them playing against Liverpool to end off this episode to potentially close up again. But given how we seem to have bottled it in the last one, I'm not confident. But let's see if Liverpool can do us a favour first off. If they don't, wow, they do. Okay, 1-0 win against Man City. That obviously is problematic in the sense of we play Liverpool next, so they're going to be very sort of up for that game now after getting a big win against Man City. But that does give us the chance to go within a point of City yet again. So we need to pray that we can get the win against Liverpool and that'll cancel out that Aston Villa game. We can just pretend that never happened. And finally, we are here. There's been quite a long break. I think it was about 18 days since our last game. So I've been skipping ahead, getting things done. And hopefully this game against Liverpool, we are at home and we have to go out and win it. Man City will also be playing today against Sheffield. So you'd expect them to just bat them and win that game. But... Obviously, we could go top of the league with this game if Man City drop points. Um, and then, of course, we win our game in hand when that uh, happens. So, potentially a huge end to the episode. But obviously, we have to get past Liverpool first. And they've been in some fine form. If we take a look at their schedule, they've had a great few wins recently. A 5-0 against Sunderland, 3-0 against Sheffield, a 1-0 against Man City. So, those last few games, you know, they've really racked up the wins. So, we need to be careful. Let's go into this game and see how our team looks. Thankfully, everyone fit. There weren't really any under-23 games, so Osimhen has lost even more sharpness coming back from his injury because there just weren't... I think there was one under-23s game that I could get him involved in. Um, so a little bit disappointing to see him still losing sharpness, but we know how good he is, so he will be starting this game for us. However, I think what I'm going to do is switch us to this formation and try and get... You know, like I often say, a little bit more defensive solidity and we can build from there in terms of attack. But that is the team we're going to be going with. We finally got our midfield pairing of Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez back. We just need to make a couple changes to the bench and I think it'll just be Josh Brooking coming onto the bench there. I'm going to switch Buddy Ashili out for Axel de Sassi 1. He's just a little bit fairer, got his match sharpness a bit more where I want it. And two, Badia Shili is really, really good at winning headers. So if we need to start lumping balls into the box, he's the guy we want to be aiming for. And as for the rest of the bench, I think that's it. So we're going to go in with this team and see if we can get a big, big win against Liverpool. So that's, of course, how we line up in a little bit of dodgy form. Two wins, two losses and a draw in our last five. And Liverpool coming in with four wins and a loss. Coming in with this team that actually I haven't seen Salah in ages. I feel like... I don't know, has he been playing against us? Maybe I'm crazy and he has been. I just haven't been noticing him. But let's get into this game and pray that we can get something out of this. And just before this highlight started, I saw the news that Mudrick has taken a knock and pulled his groin. So he maybe will have to come off as we look to go long there um, from a Mudrick pass. He picks up the ball again here, though. Awesome end finding Nkunku, who's through in on goal. And he shoots directly into the top corner. That's a goal that we love to see about 10 minutes into this game. What a strike from Nkunku. A throw in on the far side now as Mudrick combines with Chilwell looking for Madawake in the box, but it goes all the way through to Allison in goal for Liverpool. Osimhen just sort of lurking in next to him there, maybe trying to wind the keeper up a little bit, but it looks like we're going to force them to go long, so we're going to have to win this header here. Colwell does, he finds Enzo, and we go all the way back to the goalkeeper to secure possession of the football. Colwell with a bit of a miskick there, but he manages to pick the ball back up. And now Chilwell bombing forward, trying to look for a little bit of support. Maybe Mudrick is suffering with his pulled groin because he's nowhere to be seen in terms of helping him. 
Now it's a chance for Liverpool to counter-attack, but they really uh, sort of panic in and they just hoof it back to us with Colwell. Colwell nearly losing out there. Oh my gosh, we're playing a little bit close and um, playing with fire here, but Mudrick on the wing. Crosses into the box, he finds Madawika and it's just wide of the post. That was a big chance to go two up. Liverpool playing forward with Robertson now as they find Baku in the midfield. He switches it to find Trent on the far side and he's now getting pressured by Mudrick but he's working his way down the wing. He goes past Trent, cuts it back to Olmo. It finds Baku on the edge of the box and he's never missing from there. And that is level peg in 16 minutes in. Okay, we've now seen that Mudrick is indicating he wants to come off, so there's no point playing him through that. So I think what we'll do is we'll just do a like-for-like -like change and put Nicholas Jackson on that left side. Oh my gosh, more disaster. Reese James has now taken a knock, and he's got a gashed up a leg, so I guess he's had a stud to the leg or something, because he... Wait, Caicedo can't play right back. I swear in real life he actually used to. I was thinking of putting Caicedo there, because I don't really want to have to play Josh Brooking, but instead I'll put Fafana out wide, bring Buddy Ashile on, and I think that'll be our centre-back pairing. We'll switch these two over. Um, that is an absolute disaster. Two of our better players in Mudrick and Reese James have had to come off injured in the first few minutes. Oh my gosh, Fafana has now taken a knock and it looks like a pulled groin. That's three injuries in about 30 minutes. I think we're actually cursed. This is unbelievable bad luck. So now we're going to have to play Josh Brooking in the fullback role. I, ca I can't believe it. That's three injuries already this game. Liverpool have come out to, to murder us today. Corner here for Liverpool. Costa flaps it. It does manage to get some uh, connection with the ball, but now Liverpool on the edge of our box, queuing up to take a shot as Robertson is sort of messing around with it. Madueke takes it off him, and now Osman picks it up but loses out. Thiago crosses, finds Salah, and from the middle of the box, he's volleyed it in, and that is disaster. We've made it to half time. We are 2 1 down, though, and I can't lie, I I'm putting it down to injuries. Mudrick has come off after he was playing well. Rhys James, obviously one of our best players, having to come off. And then Wesley Fafana, one of our best centre-backs, having to come off, who was covering up right back for Rhys James. I just can't believe the, the, the bad luck that we seem to be facing at the moment. Um, we're now stuck playing, you know, a bit of an inexperienced back line with Josh Brooking in there. And... I'm worried. I'm very, very worried. I think I'm going to maybe put him onto defence and just allow Chilwell to go forward. Um, it is going to leave us a little bit more isolated on this right-hand side. I'm tempted to make the change to this formation. It could backfire massively because obviously then we're giving Liverpool a lot more freedom um, to attack us. But I think it's something we have to do if we want to get back in this game. And we have a throw in now with Josh Brookin, who finds Nkunku in the box, but it sort of bounces off his back there and goes out from a clearance. And now you've got Enzo on the edge of the box, skipping the challenge, shooting from range, and it's in off the crossbar. What a strike from Enzo to get us back on level terms. Liverpool now attacking down our end as they put a cross into the box. Chilwell hoofs it clear, but that's going to be Liverpool's to win there as we're surrounded by... Red shirts. Diogo Jota now driving into the box. He shoots, but Costa is equal to it. And I feel like I want to make a couple changes, but I'm not sure how to approach this game now. Do we try and secure the point? I'm not too sure. Chilwell with a corner, whipping it in, looking for Nicholas Jackson, but he can't get on the end of it. It's a bit of a ping pong around in the box now as Chilwell crosses to the back post for Madawake. That's a huge chance, and he's missed the entire goal. That was poor. Madawake, I think, is going to come off and we'll bring on Serge Nabry. Oh my gosh, we can't make any more subs. Are you joking? We've used all of our stoppage windows. That's that's what the problem is because... Oh, wow. Okay. that That is disaster. I, I should have thought of that, but obviously with the injuries, we had to make three stoppages. Um, yeah, we had to make our changes at halftime then if we wanted to make any... Okay, um, so this is the team that will see the game out. And that is all she wrote for this game. So a 2-2 draw with Liverpool, it isn't the worst result in the end. I did send us, you know, bombing forward at the end of that game, but we couldn't really get anything out of it. 2-2 two -two isn't bad when you consider that <coughs> Manchester City dropped points in their previous fixture. So we are now three points behind them. 
officially. Goal difference wise, we're probably not going to make that difference up, but it is a net gain either way. Um, for Fana out for three to four days, which isn't the worst, so I guess Mudrick and Reese James will be fine. Um, our next game is about a week's time against Leeds. So in the next episode, we will have games against Leeds. We go back into the Champions League with uh, Salzburg, and then we're away against Wolves. But before we end this episode, we're going to skip ahead and see what Man City's result is in this game week. And it's as expected. Manchester City win 5 0 against Sheffield. They went down to 10 men. Haaland getting four goals, so he's pulling away from us men in the goal scoring um, golden boot race. Leicester beat Arsenal. That's a big win for them. Man United dropping points there. So, really not too worried about what's going on behind us. Still looking ahead. But, of course, now we have to go on a bit of a streak and win our games. We don't have any majorly difficult games until this Man City one. And then we've got Newcastle and Tottenham to end off the season. So, that Man City game, in a few episodes' time, I think is going to be a pivotal result. And, I mean, our under-18s just beat them 4-1. If we could do the same to them, I would be over the moon with that. Guys, if you did enjoy this episode, please be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and you'll never miss any of the future videos. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.